Hello and good afternoon. It is August 2nd. Temperature outside is supposed to get to 30 degrees Celsius, which is 88 Fahrenheit. So welcome to day two of doing the shower. A couple things I forgot to mention is over here on the back wall, I put on Dense Shield Tile Backer. That has fiberglass in it. Really itchy stuff when you work with it. So on for today, I've been here for a couple of hours already, and as you can see right here, I built another little stub wall. That is going to be the exact same height as this stub wall over here. In theory, anyway. The concrete has set up. I have everything cut. All this curdy is cut, ready to go. I have everything here ready to go, so let's get to it. Well, now this is going to be a little tricky. Now hopefully you'll be able to see everything I'm doing. Still a point, actually. You might not see anything. Holy crap. Ah. That might help. So first thing I want to do is grab a pail and a sponge. And I want to clean all this. I cleaned it once already, but it got dirty again because I'm a messy person. And I'm wearing gloves because working with mortar and stuff like that it has some very fun chemicals in there that eat away at skin not good so I'm giving everything a nice little wipe down Too much water. I just want to get the floor wet. That should help with the mortar sticking to the concrete. Should and do are two totally different things though, but well that works. The drain. So I've been doing a lot of research online trying to figure out which mortar to use, modified or unmodified. They're saying that you should use modified on plywood and product that is porous or that will absorb moisture. So plywood and concrete pretty much covers that. And you should be using unmodified on stuff like this uh, waterproofing on a drywall board or tile backer. So I'm going to be using unmodified since most of my substrate is porous material. I have read some people saying it makes no difference which one you use, but I don't know. Like, since three quarters of my stuff is going to be porous material and I only have this little bit that's going to be what's the word, uh, that would need unmodified, I'm not going to bother with it. It'll still hold, I'm hoping. If I was doing a huge, like, if I was doing this entire wall and tile, I would definitely use the unmodified. Yeah, unmodified. See, it's so confusing. So I'm going to mix up a little batch of mortar. I'm only going to do enough. I'm only going to mix up enough to do this little piece and this piece because my Dietra goes from here, rolls down, goes on the floor, comes back up, over here, and up again. So I'm going to do this a little bit first, then I'll do the floor, then I'll do the other wall. I like doing little bits at a time because the, mor the uh, mortar sets up pretty quickly. It takes 24 hours to fully dry, apparently. According to the Schluter Curdy website, they say you should wait 24 hours before doing any work like tile and stuff. But, so yeah, I'm going to be doing 
when all is set because I have worked with I have done tile before and it does set up pretty quickly and I have, I have always waited 24 hours for doing tile work so we will work on this little bit first then we'll work on the floor then we'll work on that a little bit hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing I might change the camera just a little bit because you do see a lot of this floor here will that make a difference oh I don't have it zoomed in that'll make a difference maybe let's adjust you that's a little better and I've been decapitated okay I'll move it back and I'll just move this up just a little bit hopefully you don't get too seasick there we go there how's that oh. all right so going to mix some mortar and uh, get to it
Sorry about that, the camera died and I was so busy doing this I didn't even notice, but it's done and yeah, with me here like this, you probably didn't see a single thing I did, so I'll show you now. This one, come on, let go. And here it is, done, finally, well, this stage of it anyway. Are we all the way out? Yes, we're all the way out. So all the corners are overlapped by two inches with the uh, Ditra. And then I put about another three inches of mortar over top of the joint. So this way there should be no leaks. So all my corners are like that. That's why I have a wet bum. I'm sitting on the sponge. And this has some mortar down underneath the rim so there should be no leakage and yeah that's it this is done for day two i was actually thinking about putting a joint right here like a ditra strip then it's just like nah don't need it because once i put the frp over top of this it'll be completely water sealed anyway so it's all good so that's completed. All my tools are clean. So the process of how I did this to get it right, I used my wooden trowel here. This is the one I should have been using when I skirted the uh, or screeded the uh, concrete. So I took the wooden trowel and I smashed it down into place. Then I took my six inch knife that I have cleaned somewhere. Here it is. Where'd you go? There you are. Then I took my six inch knife and I just started scraping like this so this way I could get all the air bubbles out of the uh, out between the vitra and the concrete like I'd, I'd make the uh, mortar get into the uh, vitra better. So that's what that was. And you can see the joint there, how it's nice and skimmed. I should have done a little bit more. Oh well. Too late now. Threw it all out. Don't want to mix more. So that's it for day two. Tomorrow, yeah, it's, it's around two o'clock right now. I don't want to come back and do this in the afternoon. So in two days, I'll come back and we'll start doing tile and FRP. So that's it for now. Until next time, have a good one.